We all love a good mystery story, and it seems like some of the very best of them occur out at sea. Everybody knows the story of the Mary Celeste, which was found drifting without a crew, but that's just one of many maritime mysteries which have puzzled the public for years. From missing boats to missing crews and disappearing passengers, this video is full of happenings at sea which are strange, but true. The Panamanian oil tanker Pantalina is a massive vessel, measuring nearly 400 feet in length. It's hard for something so huge to go missing, but it did exactly that while sailing off the coast of Gabon in August 2018. Observers say the ship simply vanished off radar screens while sailing through the region, prompting fears for the crew of 17 Georgians and two Russians on board. The area of sea around Gabon is known as the Gulf of Guinea and has been notorious for piracy and hijacking activity in recent years. Given that the vessel's locator beacon seemed to have been deliberately turned off, that was the first assumption of investigators. The ship sent a brief distress message before it disappeared, but that too was cut off abruptly. Pirates were indeed eventually revealed as the culprits and the crew and ship were returned unharmed nine days later. At a weight of over 266,000 tons and a length of 1,000 feet, it was remarkable that a ship as large as the South Korean freighter Stellar Daisy could ever float at all. The real mystery about her isn't how she sailed, though. It's how she sank. She was transporting iron ore to China from Brazil in April 2017 when she suddenly issued a distress call and then vanished off the coast of Uruguay. Later sightings of an oil slick some 3,000 miles out at sea suggested a disaster had occurred, and two crew members later recovered on a life raft confirmed that they'd seen their ship sink. What they couldn't shed any light on is how or why. The Stellar Daisy was classified as a very large ore carrier, and so was perfectly suited to the job it was doing. Why would it suddenly fail on a routine trip? One theory suggests that the ore shifted position and liquefied, causing an imbalance. But as Stellar Daisy was designed to carry liquid ore, this shouldn't have been a problem. Who or what drowned this Miss Daisy? There are many strange rumors and myths around the religion of Scientology, and those rumors aren't helped by things like a Scientologist cruise ship being quarantined for an outbreak of a disease which was once all but eradicated in Western adults. The 440-foot-long cruise liner Freewinds was quarantined in St. Lucia after multiple passengers were diagnosed with measles. The ship, which is advertised as a religious retreat, which offers spiritual counseling, became a plague vessel which nobody was allowed to board or depart until the disease was brought under control. It's thought that a member of the crew brought the disease on board with them, and it then spread to other passengers and crewmates. The crew member had complained of a cold when boarding the ship in Caraco and was tested for measles. But by the time the results came back, the ship was almost in St. Lucia. Blood samples were taken for all 277 people on board while the standard three-week quarantine was applied. Nuclear submarines are designed to be dangerous, but when a fire breaks out on board, they're as much a danger to themselves as anybody else. Normally, that isn't an issue, because submarines are underwater. But the Russian Navy submarine K-84 Ekaterinburg was in dry dock when she mysteriously burst into flame. K-84 was being repaired in Murmansk when a careless welder allowed sparks to ignite wooden scaffolds around the ship, which in turn set fire to rubber coating on the hull. Conventional firefighting approaches couldn't control the blaze and so she was eventually partially sunk to put the fires out. It's believed no radiation leakage occurred. Had the weapons not been removed before repair work had begun, Russia would have been at risk of the most significant nuclear accident since Chernobyl. It cost over $15 million to repair the damaged submarine, which eventually returned to the fleet in full working order three years after the incident. The Scientologists who were quarantined on the cruise liner Freewinds for three weeks probably didn't enjoy their unplanned vacation. But things are far worse for the sailors and marines who make up the crew 
of the USS Fort McHenry, who have been trapped at sea for five months after an outbreak of the rare disease Peritidis. Nobody knows how the outbreak on the amphibious warship began, but it caused everybody on board to miss Christmas as they were denied permission to dock at any port after the outbreak began in December 2018. The illness is highly contagious and presents symptoms similar to mumps. The entire crew of 703 military personnel was supplied with an MMR booster vaccine to treat the disease, and all were expected to make a full recovery eventually, but quarantine can only be ended 30 days after the last reported case of illness. It's believed they were finally allowed to head home from the Persian Gulf in May 2019. Maritime history is full of stories of drunken ship captains making unwise decisions while in command of their vessels, but that was thought to be a thing of the past until an Englishman called Michael Kinnaird drunkenly beached his 70-foot shipping vessel in Plymouth in late 2017. Kinnaird initially claimed he was sick due to food poisoning, but later admitted to having drunk beer while in command of the ship. The fishing trawler F.V. Aldry ran aground while attempting to leave the harbor, having failed to correct course to head out into the shipping channel. Kinnaird claimed that lights used by fishermen on the coast had confused him, but a judge at his trial decided that a fishing boat captain of 40 years' experience wouldn't have made such a basic error while sober. He was unable to explain why he didn't reduce speed or attempt to reverse if he was unsure of what he was looking at. Nobody on board was hurt, and the ship was successfully dragged back off the rocks during the next high tide. Kinnaird received a two-month prison sentence. When the cargo ship Rio ran aground close to Cabardinka, a strange set of circumstances arose. All 21 of the crew on board were unharmed, but as the ship was sailing under the flag of Togo, they weren't granted the right to disembark. The owner of the ship wasn't keen to pay to have the ship towed back out to sea, and the authorities didn't want to pay to have the ship towed if nobody was going to reimburse the significant costs of such an exercise. As a result, the ship has stayed exactly where it ran aground in December 2018 and became a tourist destination. Visitors have flocked from all around to take a photo with the stricken ship, and graffiti art has begun to appear on the hull. All this time, though, the crew of 21 stranded sailors has remained on board. If the owner of the ship continues to remain unwilling to pay for his property to be returned, it's conceivable that Rio will be disposed of by cutting it into pieces and selling it for scrap. But that seems like a waste of a vessel which is largely undamaged and still seaworthy. It's said that taking a trip aboard a luxury cruise liner can be the trip of a lifetime. And it sadly seems that a 24-year-old decided that having completed the trip of a lifetime on board the cruise liner Anthem of the Seas in April 2018, he no longer had anything to live for. The vessel had been on a trip to the Bahamas and was making its way back to New Jersey when the incident occurred. Eyewitness reports and CCTV footage show that the man, who had previously been described as being in good spirits and showed no signs of unhappiness, intentionally went overboard off the coast of Virginia. The ship immediately turned back and a search operation was conducted, but no trace of the missing passenger could be found. After several hours, the U.S. Coast Guard took over the search as the ship continued with its journey, but no trace of the missing American passenger was ever found. Modern cruise ships are hardy vessels, designed to withstand turbulent seas and challenging conditions, but they are not infallible. The passengers who chose to board the Viking Sky in March 2019 know all about that. There were 1,300 people on board Viking Sky when the Norwegian vessel got into trouble barely a mile from the land on Norway's west coast. The ship had suffered the rare and unusual misfortune of both engines failing at once. Videos taken by passengers inside the ship showed objects as large as a grand piano sliding across the floor as the waves began to batter the lifeless liner. Conditions became so bad that rescue boats had to be turned back away from 30-foot high waves, and it eventually became necessary to airlift the stranded passengers and crew to safety. 
It's not known what phenomenon caused both engines to fail at once, which is so unlikely that it's considered to be almost impossible. But the crew was eventually able to get one of the engines restarted, meaning the ship was eventually able to limp home. By that point, it was almost empty. The fate of the French submarine Eridus isn't a mystery. It was destroyed in March 1970 after six years of service and sank to the bottom of the sea. The mystery is what caused the explosion which sank her, and the answer may never be known. The Daphne-class French Navy submarine was on a training mission at the time of her accident, a mission of a routine kind that she'd completed many times before. She was in familiar waters, around the base of St. Tropez. At 7.13 a.m. on March 4th, radio contact with her was lost. The Atlantic aircraft accompanying her lost radar contact at the same time. All nearby French vessels were sent to look for her, assisted by American and Italian ships. Before long, diesel fuel and fragments of the ship's body floated to the surface. It was clear that Eridus was lost. Coastal surveying laboratories confirmed they detected an undersea explosion at 7.28 a.m., 15 minutes after contact had been lost. It took more than a month to find the bulk of the wreck, which had sunk to 3,600 feet below the waterline. The stern was wedged in a mysterious blast crater 100 feet wide. A full investigation was ordered, but the results have never been made public. If you like a good ghost story, you'll love the tale of the Marlboro, which should be taken with a pinch of salt. We'll start with the parts of the tale we know to be facts. The Marlboro was a merchant sailing ship built in Glasgow, Scotland in 1876. By 1890, she was regularly sailing between London and New Zealand, carrying cargoes of wool and frozen meat. In January 1890, she vanished without a trace after leaving New Zealand. All of that we know to be fact. What we're less sure about are the claims of Singapore newspaper The Straits Times, which claimed that the Marlboro had been found close to Cape Horn in October 1913, still afloat some 23 years after her disappearance, with the skeletal remains of all her crew still aboard. It alleged that a sailing ship named the Johnson made the grisly discovery and confirmed the finding by sending a party on board when attempts to communicate failed. Although the crew was dead, there was allegedly no sign of an accident on board. The report is considered to be unlikely. A drifting vessel would almost certainly have been torn apart by storms or thrown onto rocks during 23 years around Cape Horn. Still, it makes for a good story. Lyubov Orlova was once a glamorous cruise liner that could show you the coast of the Antarctic in style. She was named in honor of the first ever female Soviet movie star and was the pride of the Marine Expeditions fleet. Her peak years were 1976 to 2000, and by 2010, she was beginning to show her age. By 2012, the tours she ran were no longer turning a profit, and so she was impounded because of her owner's debts. The decision was made that the proud old ship would be torn apart and sold for scrap. It would seem that the vessel herself had other ideas. An attempt was made to tow her from Newfoundland to the Dominican Republic in January 2013. Lyubo Vorlova broke free of the tow rope and sailed off in the opposite direction, with nobody on board. At the time, she was off the coast of Canada. A full two months later, there were confirmed sightings of her passing by the coast of Ireland. There's been no further news about the ship, so we like to believe that she's still out there somewhere, finally free to make her own way around the world. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.